Hey, this is TJ from TJOnTheRoad.com. Back with you, continuing my series. This is part four on the Waldorf Iridium. Today, we're going to be looking at all the mods. Lots of fun here. We're going to be looking at the envelopes, the LFOs, the complex modulator, and the modulation matrix. There's so much going on here, so much that you can do. Get really, really, really crazy. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. If you like these videos that I'm doing here, please do share them, subscribe to this channel, and check out tjontheroad.com for more. Let's start with the crazy fun. The envelopes. Um, there are six envelopes. One's dedicated to the amp, then another to the filter of one, filter of two, and then one, two, three free envelopes. Now you can assign these envelopes anywhere that you like. It's just that the amp envelope and the two filter envelopes are already assigned to their given destinations. They are, you know, pretty much what you would expect from an envelope. You have your attack, your decay, you have a delay function for when the envelope starts, the sustain, release, and you have this cool function, which is a variance. They can set the amount of variance of which the envelope will occur at any given uh, step. If I raise the attack, lower the sustain, it's going to start looking very familiar. And this is on the amp envelope, say, for example. There are a number of different ways that you can change the curve. That's the RC. That's the exponential. And then you have a linear. Now, I do wish there was a lot more choices in between uh, because the exponential and the RC are pretty extreme. But those are your choices, and you can do the same here with the decay. They have exponential. They have an alternate exponential, which isn't as extreme. And then you have a linear. And the same is true with the release curve. You can loop them. You can loop either just the attack and decay portion of it or the full ADSR portion. And you can set it for single mode or just off as the normal function, the default. One thing I would like to see with the loop is that if you could assign it to, say, a number of loops, this is just an infinite loop. If, for example, you just wanted two loops and then it would continue throughout the regular sustain phase, uh, like I've seen on some other synthesizers, that's really cool. So you can get two quick hits of attack and decay, uh, but that's hopefully something coming. You can, let's say, turn that off, and then you can go up here and you can assign it to a mod target. Okay, now I'm going to go to the free one to assign this to pitch. Let's uh, turn this back. And the free, okay, we can assign that to a target. Let's say raise the attack. We'll make it linear so it's easy to hear. Use the sustain mod target. Here also you can set the amount. Okay. 
All right, I want to add a target. I'm going to put the destination as the first one as the pitch, and then I'm going to set the amount. Then you can also set a controller. Okay, if you want to turn the controller to say something like any one of these choices, the other envelopes, the LFOs, the complex, okay, all of these expression ones and or CCs. You set it to velocity, voice number, the sequence parameters, as well as CVs. Let's say, for example, I'm going to set that to the modulation wheel. Okay, so I have that set to the modulation wheel. I set this to the amount. And if I put this back to zero, we'll turn that all the way up, set that back to the default. All right, so if I hit it, you're not gonna hear it first. If I crank the modulation wheel, and or if I just put the modulation wheel at 50%, wherever you're looking for. So there's a lot of different uh, ways that you can vary this and have a lot of additional control. Not that much different than what you might have seen before with envelopes. There are obviously a lot of choices and a lot of ways that you can assign them. One other thing I also should mention about the envelopes is while you've seen me use all the controls up here to uh, assign them and or to set their amounts, you can also set their amounts here on the panel, the attack, Okay, release and so forth. Okay, and you can select which one you're doing. You'll see here when I changed it, it's selected for filter two. That's why it changed it from the first free filter. If I, you can select it from the different amounts. Say I want to change it to the amp. Okay, and or all the other different types. <laughs> LFOs. Here again, you can control the LFOs and select which ones on the panel. You can select the six LFOs that are available just by turning the dial here. And you can see them change on the screen. You can change their speed. And the speed goes all the way up into audio range, up to 100 hertz, all the way down to 240 seconds. That's really slow. Okay, let's get a little faster. All right, and you can change the amount, positive or negative. All right, so uh, you can change the shape up here. You have sine, triangle, square, saw, down and up and sample and hold. Again, you can change the speed here. You can do this cool function called warping. That'll give you a lot of really cool stuff. You can change the amounts of which is reflected by everything that it is its target. You can change the attack so it actually has its own envelope to where it begins to affect, as well as the decay. You can sync the LFOs. This is also one thing I wish you could do with the envelopes, uh, but the sync is only available for the LFOs. You can change the mode, that being from poly. You can have it set to be global to where they all cycle in the same uh, time frame and you can do a single trigger. 
has a skew control, changes it to a triangle, and it is weighted to be on a positive direction by default. Change the phase and the initial delay. So that's different than the attack. The attack is a smooth envelope coming in. The delay is just a hard, you know, no play it for this amount of period of time and then start. Here again, you can set them to a mod target. If I wanted to set that to a pitch, say for example, here again, select pitch. I can select the amount here or here. So let's do it down here on the panel. You hear that? Here again, I can also set a controller for that. So if I return that to, the, to zero, easier to do it this way. Set the default. Let's say I want the controller to be after touch. And increase that. The controller amount. Nothing initially, and then you'll hear it as I press down. So it gives you lots of controls. All right, all of those are the same. They're not assigned to anything by default. Uh, but they're very easy to assign uh, if you want to. Next, we're going to take a look at the complex modulator. If you hit the mod button, you'll see the modulation matrix. You hit the complex modulator, and this is where all the crazy fun begins. Um, this is basically an LFO that you can create its shape for. Um, it is pretty complex, so I'm going to try to go through each parameter. There are actually two different modulators that you can blend together. Curve A and Curve B. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Okay, you can blend them by using this knob or setting that to its own modulation. Say, for example, an envelope here. Um, that's curve A, that's curve B. I haven't made any changes to it yet, but you'll see the difference in a moment. You can set its speed, you can warp it. Okay, again, you can set the amounts. It has its own attack envelope. And it has this thing called entropy, which makes it do a lot of jittering. So that'll add a lot of craziness to what you're trying to do. Again, you can sync it. The different poly modes, skew, phase, and the initial delay. All right, so the first thing you really want to do, though, is you want to set a curve. Now, this is really where the fun starts because you can set the number of steps. Here it's set for eight steps. You can dial all the way up to 32 steps. But we're gonna go back to eight just to make it a little easier to demonstrate. You can set the level for each individual step. So this is step one. You'll see the level change. Okay, and then you can set the curve. You have a linear curve, a step curve, Cosine, saw, and what they call curve. Curve is probably easier to see once you change that. And the curve value, excuse me. So if you change the curve value, you'll see a curve be generated there. All right, so let's say I leave that for step one. I want to go to step two. That's the next one here. Okay, I'm just going to do this at random. Say, uh, oh, we'll change the level all the way up. Okay, and I want to make that a step. And I'm going to go to step two. I'm going to turn the level all the way down. No idea what this is going to sound like. It's going to be fun, though. That's the coast. And let's say step three. Uh, we'll, we'll raise that one up, too. Make it a saw. Step four. Uh, let's see, raise that up all the way here. Step six, just change that to a step. Whoops. And let's say step seven. Draw. Step eight. Okay, we'll 
change that to a curve and increase the value. Or decrease the value. There we go. Okay, and that's the starting position when it loops back to number one. Okay, so that's curve one. If we go back to the complex, and let's just say we want to get that assigned to a target. Okay, again, we'll assign that to pitch. We'll see what it sounds like. Of course, we have to increase the amount. Lower the speed. Okay, make some crazy kind of uh, video game type sounds. Now, if we want to go to curve B, say for example, okay, I'm just going to leave that alone. But if I blend it to here, you'll see it changes back to the solid wave. Okay, and if I was to set that to a mod target, let's say to an LFO, um, you can just hit the LFO here, so the amount, it'll actually come up on its own. I max that out. Let's see what happens. You can actually hear it change from one side to the other, the A and the B side, if we slow it down. That's from Curve A, the crazy curve, to curve B, the sawtooth. Of course, that depends on what I do with the LFO. Let's just say that's on a sine wave. If I make it to do a square, say for example, we'll go back to that. So lots of crazy fun. And now you only get one complex modulator, but if you were to layer two different layers, I'm going to show you that in a later video, uh, you can actually use this twice in your given sound. Now, the next thing that you can do is you can hit this edit here. You can clear all the steps. So let's go to curve A and I'm going to clear them all. Now they flatlined. And I can make this all step mode, say for example. So if you're looking for a step LFO, this is one way of a great way to do it. Let's say uh, I want to go to number one, number two, number two, number three. Again, I'm just doing this at random. Oh, that's number four. We'll leave number three alone. Okay, that's number seven. See how that sounds? It's still doing the modulation between the two. So if I go back to the modulation matrix, you'll see all these things are lining up here in the modulation matrix. If I want to change the blend, go to number four here. Okay, and I'll change the amount to zero. So it only actually plays A, that being the step that I created. Okay. In curve A. Let's try that there. There we go. Increase the speed. And that's where the fun begins. Again, you can sync this. You turn that on. Just like all the other LFOs, it'll give you divisions. And these are all the divisions that are available. You can do it up to 1,024 beats. That's really slow. It's almost like a song length. All the way down to one thirty second of a beat. <laughs> Lastly, we're going to talk about the modulation matrix. Now, you look at this and you say, what? There's 40 slots. Now, to a lot of synth geeks like myself, that's a challenge to use them all. And you probably could particularly when you're using them uh, very subtly for each slot, you can give your sounds a lot, little, a lot of little dynamic 
and or variations into them that can you know give it a lot of interesting sound over time. Um, assigning something directly in the modulation matrix is very easy. You'll see here that we've already got these assignments from before that we did directly from the LFO and the envelope screens uh, and the complex modulator screens. But if you wanted to assign something directly from here, you could either just tap on it to go to that slot number or you can dial it. And then you can assign a source. Let's say I want to sign an LFO, LFO2. And then if I want to sign it to a pitch, just very similar to what I did done before. Let's say uh, to the pitch, and then I can set the amount. Again, you can sign in a controller to that. Okay. Let's say I sign LFO3 to that. Okay. And the control amount, LFO3 is currently on a sine wave. So it increases and decreases as LFO3 is controlling uh, the depth of LFO2. And you can go through all these, fill up all these slots if you dare. If you want to clear a slot, all you need to do is hit the clear button, clears it away. Well, hey, that's it. It's all the mods, the envelopes, the envelope generators, the complex modulator, and the mod matrix. Thanks so much for watching these uh, videos. If you do like this series, please do share the videos and subscribe to this channel. Check out tjontheroad.com for more. Next in the series, we're going to be talking about the effects.